I bought well over 1,500 storage units at auction and been in the business for over a decade. Is Storage Wars and the new episodes in general, is it real or fake? Storage Wars is now in season 13. Um, they've been on for 13, 13 seasons, I guess about 13 years. It's on A&E. Um, they've got three episodes, either three or four, I think, that have aired of the, the new season. A lot of the seasons in the past, some of them I didn't really pay attention to, um, but I kind of wanted to see, because it's been on for so long, what was going on now, because I know a lot of the characters either aren't on there or a lot of the people have actually retired, but then they have them back on there again. And the new ones, just like any show that keeps dragging on, dragging on, dragging on, it's not as good as it used to be. And keep in mind that it's it's reality TV, but the key word there is TV. So it's, it's for entertainment. There are some aspects that are real, but there's a lot of aspects that are not real or just not true representations of any kind of a business model. Um, as far as buying storage units um, But watching season 13 the biggest problem is the characters They just don't have the same the good characters like they did the beginning as far as just a review of the show and then I'm gonna kind of get into What's fake and what's real, but just a kind of a general quick review of the new season The original you know you had distinct characters good and bad that you know you either rooted for or pulled for which is any good movie good show you had Dave they called him the mogul. People wanted to hate him because, you know, he bid on everything and won everything. You had Daryl. He was the gambler. But he was, he'd been like crazy, but kind of the goofy, funny guy. Then you had Barry, the collector, the odd eccentric guy. And then you had Brandy and Jared, kind of the ones that were new to the business. But it was a couple, kind of a, a lot of people um, related to him because they were just a regular couple with kids and stuff trying to, you know, trying to make a living. Now you've got, you still have Brandy and Jared on these new ones, but they're not together and they're just out there fighting, but they're doing other stuff, but they still throw them on there just to have, you know, the old faces on there. She's not even doing the business anymore and he's not. So they're buying units and they're pretty much just throwing everything away. It's kind of, it doesn't make any sense. They brought Daryl in one episode I saw. He's gotten really old now. He's actually retired and lives in Arizona because he had a heart attack. So they, he bought a unit. He could barely even move any of the, the stuff in there. He was just trying to move some furniture around just to, you know, when they go back and they're going through the unit, he could barely even move anything around and moving slow and everything like that. Dave's not on there. And Barry, he's been gone for a long time. So now you have Brandy and Jared, not even together, not even in the business. You have Renee. He's actually in the business, even though he kind of acts overkill on the show, but he truly is in the resale business you can go follow his youtube channel or different stuff and see you know he's the real deal in the resale business ivy's the most realistic representation of somebody out there buying you know in realistic prices and a realistic business model and then other than that you've got a couple you got the guy i think his name's kenny he's just there for you know comic relief and the you know other kind of new people they just kind of keep you know throwing in and in and out um that which they've always kind of done that some, but they keep, they're doing that now and most of them aren't really catching on. But so the old, when it originally started, it was really entertaining. And you know, now not so much like anything they've kind of, you know, run out of the, the characters just aren't as good anymore. And they're trying to pull the old characters just to throw them in there. And they're really, they're not even in the business anymore. So it's kind of, you know, and especially anybody that's in the business, it's clear, but they're even saying, you know, Jared has a restaurant and bar Brainy's trying to do trying to do house staging or something like that, but um, basically, that's kind of the deal on somewhat of a review. You know, of a review, I'm gonna kind of talk about these episodes and just Storage Wars in general. Is it um, is it real or fake? Is it any kind of a representation of this business and? you know, the storage auction business in general and what it would take to have a business in that. First, I'm going to cover a couple of things that are real. Um, the One of the real things that I hear people that they think is the fake part is, yes, you can find anything in these units. I find 
you know, even in a trash unit, in most units, you are going to find something really good, if not several things really good. So yeah, you can find anything. So that's, you know, finding the really good stuff, you know, that's, that's the whole reason why people even do it. So no, that's not really the, you know, the untrue part, the made up part is, is finding, you know, all, you know, finding odd stuff, finding crazy stuff, finding valuable stuff. If you weren't finding that stuff, people wouldn't continue to buy them. So that's really kind of a true part. I've heard people that buy them say, oh, I don't, but I mean, I find all kinds of stuff. You know, I always have, I find, you know, a lot of the similar stuff that they found in the show, I've found similar units I've found. So that's not the fake part. Like I said, wouldn't keep doing it if you didn't find good stuff. And the way it's conducted, like the overall auction, you know, Dan Dotson, the way he does the auction, because he's a real auctioneer, that's pretty much, that's pretty much legit. That's pretty much the way a storage auction works. And like I said, the two characters, Ivy, he's pretty, you know, a realistic character in the way he's running his business and everything and the way he bids is pretty realistic. Renee, he, he's, it's, Renee is the real deal, but he just, for TV, he kind of gets overkill, I guess you'd say sometimes. Um, like on the episode the other night, one of the newer episodes, he bid 700 and something dollars for a unit. All it had was a safe laying on the floor, a little safe. Now I've seen in person people get crazy like that, so it could happen, but most of the time, anybody's gonna know if it's just that safe left up, the people moved out and they left the safe for whatever reason. Even though he did find a $20 bill in it, he opened it, he paid over $700, sat there and worked, sweated, busted the safe, op safe open, and then found a $20 bill. All right, now we're gonna kind of cover the aspect of this show that is fake or just not a good representation of what it's gonna actually take to be in the storage auction business. Biggest thing is not necessarily fake, but they just don't show a lot of the, they ignore a lot of the stuff. They, you know, they don't show any of the loading process for the most part. They go in there and they kind of just start throwing everything around, pull it all out into the hallway, and then they're always like, you know, they're going to have their people come and clean it up, whatever the case is. You're not going to have anybody that's going to continue to work for you if you just go in there and you drag it all over the place and then walk off and leave. And, and that's, I mean, that's going to be a hard, hard, you know, you're not going to keep people around working for you if that's what you're really going to do. And typically, you, when it comes to a sword junction, the fact that you never know what you're going to find, normally you got to at least be there for the load to kind of supervise because... You could find a bag full of money, and unless you get somebody you can really, really, really trust, you really, most of the time, need to be there. And a lot of times, loading this stuff is a logistical nightmare. Like, they got a big brush hog on one of the episodes the other night, and they could barely, they tried moving it, and it wouldn't budge an inch. They never showed how they got it out of there. Out of there. They just show later on, it's up on their trailer, and they're pulling in to have it, have it checked out or whatever. So you know that's a whole nother did they have to have a fort lift get this thing out of there and lift it up you know sometimes the logistical part of moving this stuff is a huge deal can cost a lot of money and be very time consuming but they don't show like any of that stuff normally and that's a you know you got to move everything out of these the good the bad the ugly and that's a major part of the business and all the dump fees that you incur and everything you know they don't show any of that all the extra expenses when they show their little paid 500 and then they're trying to add the items up to get there you know and then sometimes they're they're like they pull a couple things and they say they're going to throw the rest of it away that's a big dump fee right there then you've got gas and then when they have you know a couple people show up to help it's like you got to pay all of them so they don't take into account any of the other fees you know or like i said getting that that um, brush hog up onto the trailer did they have to get a forklift or what did they have to do to get it on there um you know Sometimes I've had to get tow trucks. I've had to get tow trucks to pull vehicles out of units and other stuff. You know, there's been all kinds of crazy stuff I've had to do. But, um, so those are kind of stuff, not really necessarily fake, but they just don't show the full story a lot of times. And then a lot of times they'll be going through a unit and they'll kind of say, yeah, I'm not really finding anything outside of here to let me go do this right here. And you can see there's still a massive wall of boxes, the whole back of the unit, that they haven't even touched yet. So, yeah, the, I mean, the show's only, because some of these units literally take days and days and weeks to go through everything. There's so much stuff. So, obviously, I understand it. this. It's a TV show. It's for entertainment. But, um, but, yeah, they don't show going through the majority of the stuff on those big units. They, they just don't show, and they'll just kind of show a few things, and they don't go through it thoroughly at all. 
and they'll say they're done and it's like you can clearly see a bunch of boxes there that are still stacked up that they haven't even touched but the biggest um like truly fake parts of the show is the way that they'll go back they'll win the unit and the auction keeps going on and they'll go look at their unit you can't do that that's actually against the law until you go and pay for the unit just because you won the bid you cannot go back into the unit and start taking stuff out and touching stuff and you don't have time in an auction anyways the auction will go on and it's by the time you went and did that a lot of times there's only one or two, two more units and it doesn't take that long it would be over with but that's for tv so you know there's it's that's all for tv that's something that never ever can happens in real life or could even happen um then you have the other fake part is you've got extremely exaggerated prices on stuff and really low prices what i mean by that is one second they're holding up something you know and they're like oh this is a 200 dollars right here and it's like that's not 200 dollars. there's no way you can get 200 dollars. and then on the other hand they're throwing stuff you know throwing stuff around oh i can't sell that oh i can't sell that that's trash and you're looking like you know there's a lot of sellable stuff that they're doing or they're not even really looking they'll kind of look at the top of the box oh that's all trash in there and they throw it to the side once again I know it's just for TV, they don't have time to look at everything, but so many times I've had a box where everything in it is trash and find one thing buried down in the bottom that might be $20, $30, $40, or even more when you find gold down in the bottom of a box where pretty much everything else is trash. It can literally pay for the whole unit in a box of trash. All right, and one of the biggest aspects of the show from the very beginning to now that is fake or it's just kind of dumb but it's just done just for TV is that every single unit that everyone gets they have something and they have to have to go and have it checked out oh we need to go and have this checked out every single unit you know um, throughout the show that's what they do and in real life every now and then very very rare like if it's some kind of weird sculpture that you know is something valuable but you can't find good markings on it maybe you know something like that you could take to have looked at but so much of the stuff it's like the other night on the show the one that I keep talking about on one of the newer ones Brandy found um this old medical equipment it was a machine had the name of it written right in front the model numbers on it and everything all you have to do is go on your phone go to google punch that in and see what it you know and see what the price comes up it literally take within you know even if it's something that doesn't come easy within five minutes the majority of stuff you can see on there you can go to ebay and go to completed listings and you can see what this stuff's selling for without having to load it up and go and drive to an expert and get a price so that's you know just completely phony but it's for the show so they can go and have the expert talk about the item or whatever the case is and then the expert give them many times an exaggerated price some of the prices they give them and then they immediately add that into their total and they haven't even you know sold the item they'll say yeah this could be up to fifteen hundred dollars and i'm looking at it's like yeah maybe but that might take you two years to sell that item at that price because it's a really weird piece of art and it's just it's worth that book value or whatever but good luck finding somebody to give you that price so the whole aspect of them running down taking these items to them getting them appraised and then bam it goes right onto their total like that it's all that's all not real not really what you're gonna do especially they'll just drop everything they're doing and just leave the unit strewn out in the hallway and haven't even gone through most they'll give up halfway through and say let's go get this checked out and it's like the way that you make money off of a storage unit is by selling every little thing and all those little dollar things the clothes the regular knickknacks housewares and stuff that's what adds up and makes a lot of money and then all of that when you find that weird stuff that oh this one item here is worth 500 dollars, that's like icing on the cake and but all your regular you gotta have base sets base sets you know clothes pots and pans regular old stuff the stuff that they're just throwing around and saying trash that's all your base hits and then the weird stuff that they get excited about and that's like the make and break on the whole unit that's just icing on the cake i mean that's not you know not how these units are going to work where you can find all that stuff like i said i found all that kind of stuff and more but that's not the main part of your business the main part of your business is all the regular stuff and that's just like bonus stuff stuff that they get excited about and they're like they'll show the paid for amount on the unit a thousand dollars and they'll be sitting at five hundred dollars because they only added up a few things in the unit and then it's like if this 
one unit here is not worth at least a thousand dollars then you know it's a bust and then it'll be worth 500 and they'll get back to their amount they paid and sometimes that's another thing they get all excited because they made it back to breaking even breaking even is not making money doubling is not really making money by the time you get all of your expenses added in you normally got to be at least tripling the amount if you pay five hundred dollars you need to be at least fifteen hundred dollars because you got to add expenses in and your time at least fifteen hundred dollars made on the unit to really start making money and really you know you start getting like two thousand dollars and up and that's when it's really a decent unit that you're truly making money and paying the bills with. But that's kind of my um, review on the new episodes and just kind of my view as a longtime storage auction buyer, somebody that's been in the business a long time and this is how I make my living full time. Kind of my review of the new shows and just the overall, you know, concept of the show and how real it is or fake it is as far as that being a true you know business model so for the most part a lot of it's not really true but it's TV it's for it's for entertainment it's reality TV everybody wants to you know focus on the reality part and forget that it's on TV they're still editing they're still cutting still cutting so a lot of aspects are not true and it's definitely not something that you can base any kind of a business off of and think that's how you're going to make money and you know that it's going to be realistic way that the business is going to work but all right like it um, comment hit the subscribe button and i'll see you later